Welcome back to the game development for Windows Phone tutorial. In today's episode we're going to continue building out our Mango Lander game by learning how to draw shapes on screen and using this as the basis for creating a level. First, a quick update from the last episode. I discovered that the pitch reading from a motion object returns values that are independent from the current phone screen orientation, meaning that if I hold the phone this way it works fine. But when I flip it over, the rotation is the reverse of what it should be. Fortunately the solution was simple, we just have to check for the current orientation of the phone and negate the rotation if necessary, like so. Um, as you can see I'm checking for the current orientation of the phone and if it's a particular direction then I negate the rotation value. Anyway, let's move on to the subject of today's episode, drawing shapes onto the screen. We're going to be creating a single shape across the lower half of the screen with a jagged top edge and using this as the level. I'm not going to get super detailed on how graphics cards work and so on at this stage, but it's important to understand a few basics before we continue. In modern 3D graphics, every object is composed of a series of points known as vertices and triangles are drawn between the vertices to give objects form. Textures are then typically laid over the top of the triangles to give the appearance of a real object, um, lighting effects applied and so on. The key concept is that as a general rule everything on the screen starts off as a collection of triangles in the 3D space. We can call these triangles primitives. Unfortunately, XNA does not directly expose easy ways of drawing primitives, as instead it is geared toward drawing more high-level items like meshes for 3D objects and sprites for 2D objects. Behind the scenes, these once again start off as triangles. For example, take our lander sprite that we, that we draw currently. This is composed of four vertices, the corners of a triangle, connected by two triangles uh, and overlaid with a texture. In order to draw triangles by hand ourselves, we have to take a look at one of the example projects that ships with XNA. And here it is. Uh, this primitives project here, you can find a link to it um, in the description. So this primitives uh, sample implements a class called primitive batch. Um, we're going to use this class in our own project and use it to draw a level. So you can see in here primitive batch.cs. Um, I've already copied this into our project and made a few minor changes, as you can see here. Um, I've added it into the Mango Lander .graphics namespace, put it in a, a nice directory, and, and so on. Um, but basically, it's exactly the same as the one that is in the um, XNA sample. Now let's set up the primitive batch in our game code. First, we want to add a new object. and then initialize it. Like so. So now that we have a way of drawing shapes to the screen, which I'll show you how to use in a moment, we're going to create a simple class for generating and storing a level. I've already made a bit of a start here. So uh, you'll see this level.cs class and as you can see, right now a level will just consist of a list of points, and I've called this the terrain. Super straightforward. Um, these points will be drawn in the order that they appear in the list, so they should be ordered by their x coordinate. Um, I won't enforce this, but keep in mind when generating a level. I'm going to add a couple of static functions for generating levels. First, let's make a super simple dummy level. Uh, let's say static level uh, generate dummy level and this is going to take a width and a height and I'm just going to make it a sawtooth wave so alternating between an up point and a down point and I'm going to type this out so you can see how I do it I'm going to make a boolean value set it to false and then I'm going to say i equals 1, i is less than or equal to the width, and i plus equals some value, I'm going to say 20. Uh, then I'm going to say level 
dot terrain dot add and we're going to pass in a new point with i as our x coordinate and then uh, let's say height over 2 so it's going to appear halfway down the screen and then um, if we if up is true I'm going to add 10 otherwise I'm going to subtract 10 and then I'm going to negate the value of up and we're done okay now let's draw this thing we go back into our game code first we're going to add a level object and then initialize it I accidentally made this uh, private static we want this to be public so level dot generate dummy level and we're going to pass in graphics dot preferred back buffer width and preferred back buffer height height <laughs> like so. And then in our draw code we'll put our primitive batch class to use. So under the draw sprite section we'll say draw terrain. First of all we need to call begin on the object uh, and we pass in this primitive type um, enum enumerator and I'm going to say triangle list. I believe this is the only one that actually works um, on the Windows Phone. Um, but it's the only one we're going to want to use right now anyway, so that's fine. First, a quick aside about how we'll draw it. Um, this outline represents the screen and we have the points for the level. I want the level to be drawn as a filled in shape in the lower half of the screen uh, with a jagged top edge that indicates the terrain of the level. To do this, first of all I'm going to vertically split up the shape on each point that we have defined like so, and then we split each of these trapezoids, you can see on the far left there's kind of a rectangular shape, we sp we're going to split each of those into two to make two triangles. So we have, um, in this first trapezoid we can turn that into two different, two separate triangles, and we do this across the whole shape, um, and this is how we draw the shape. It's then a simple case of calculating the corners of each of these triangles and passing that into primitive batch. Let's take a look at some code I prepared earlier. As you can see, I'm iterating over the terrain object, uh, all the points in our terrain, and for each of these points I am generating two triangles consisting of three vertices each. These triangles are using a combination of the current point, terrain index i, the next point, terrain index i plus one, and the bottom of the screen, so graphics.preferred back buffer height. I know it looks a little confusing at first, but I promise you it's not. Um, if you don't quite understand what's going on here, I suggest pausing the video, uh, getting out some pad and paper, and work out what each of these points uh, is that I'm drawing here. So draw a couple of points on the page and work out what, you, what each of these x and y coordinates are. Um, and hopefully it'll make a little more sense then. Now don't forget to call end on your primitive batch and let's run the code to see what it looks like. Perfect, so we have that uh, sawtooth wave that we wanted and uh, you can see it's drawing all the way to the bottom of the screen. So this is looking really great. Now let's make the level a bit more interesting. Um, I took the liberty of writing a random level generator earlier. It's not perfect, um, but it will serve as a good starting point. So let's take a look at this. I'm just going to modify the level initialization so that we now call generate standard level instead of generate dummy level. And I just need to pass in another couple of parameters here. These are totally arbitrary. I'm going to say 4 and 20. You can look into the code um, on your own time if you like to see what's going on. Um, for now, let's just see how this runs. Isn't that nice? So now we have a randomly generated level. Um, it's already starting to look a little more <laughs> like a proper game. Okay. 
I'm going to stop here for today. Next time we'll work on adding some more game mechanics like fuel and collisions, so actually interacting with the level that we've created. Right now, um, if I just let it go, he's going to fly straight down and through the level, um, and there's no consequence for doing that. So obviously we want to make a, make a change to that. Uh, but we'll do that in the next episode. And before I go, just a few pieces of administrative stuff. First, you can find lots of useful links in the description, including a link to the source code for this episode and every episode if you look back. Um, so if you get stuck on something, just click that link and it'll take you to the source code for that episode. Um, if you do get stuck on something, feel free to leave a comment and I'll try and help you out. And finally, don't forget to subscribe so you know when I've uploaded a new episode. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.